Well, it's still 33 degrees out. Meaning that nothing has essentially frozen in three days. Yeah. At this point. So I think all we can really do is start, start where we want to be and then work our way north and find possible opportunity. But like all the other trips we've done this year, it's going to be a lot of this, like, we might go here for 30 minutes, say, oh, it's, there's white caps here, and then go an hour north, put the snowblade on the ice, run half a mile, and say, oh, we can't get to where we want to be, and then end up somewhere else. So in all likelihood, that's probably what this is going to be. There's four locations I have in mind. What I think is probably going to happen is we're probably going to go as far north as we have to, and then as it gets colder this week, circle our way back and get to some of the stuff in which I really want to fish. But I don't know. Kind of the hard reality of this winter right now. But Mitchell, it will be an adventure. As long as we don't crash the truck first. <laughs> Five degrees in rain is not extremely conducive to ice making but we have checked location potential number one uh, it was a mix of open water and like six foot tall stacked ice so I mean pretty much not possible there um, so we're gonna go look at another spot which is probably very low possible abilities we don't honestly know right now at this point if we're fishing like we're gonna go somewhere out here today or if we're gonna drive like another three and a half hours and go somewhere else or another two hours and go somewhere else. This is gonna be one of these kind of fishing trips right now. We got literally everything man could possibly desire loaded in this truck and trailer right now. And we're just trying to make something happen for y'all. Dude, every time you point that camera at me, I'm just gonna crash the dang truck. And it's kind of like slippery out too. Look at this little spot down here. How far is it to that? It's one two miles south of us. We could definitely run the snowmobile on the shoreline, couldn't we? Looks like it. Now it's decision time, because obviously you're like, do you go out there, do you put the snowmobile on and run down the shoreline a little ways? A lot of these big lakes, they're just like so gradual on the shoreline, where like, you know, the, the ice is frozen to the bottom right next to the shoreline. So you're not gonna like fall through even if you took a machine there. But if you got couple miles down could you walk out I mean you're gonna be around fish there for sure no doubt about it I think we could fish here what do you think it looks like it there's open water farther out yeah nobody out here I like that do we dump the snowmobile and run down the shoreline I mean it's basically the only way to check and it just it all comes down to what you feel best about <laughs> It's all about the fishing, right? Like, yeah. we find good ice. We, that's one thing, but fishing still has to. I'd be feel a lot better here than going out of that place down the south end. Yeah. How do you feel about? Well, the question is, how do you feel about fishing here compared to driving somewhere else? That's, well, that's we would we, we would do. catch more on the other place I'm talking about going, but. So that's what we have to decide. It, they'd, they'd be bigger here. So more fish or bigger? I mean, I'm all about bigger fish. There's no doubt about that. Sounds like it's also all about like not being on super crappy ice, but which probably <laughs> <laughs> caught me off guard. <laughs> probably six inches of ice for sure, I'd say. Really? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's a new day. It's a new me. We have optimism is in the air. Yesterday, we left home in search of ice and walleye. We stopped at a place. Ice conditions were eh. We went out there, caught a walleye, caught a perch like pretty much in the first little while. And I just wasn't a fan of the amount of wind and the level of open water on the lake. So we got off of there. Now, generally a good principle when you're searching for ice is you keep incrementally working your way farther north. So now we are as far north as one can go in uh, in the Midwest and we have a lead on some ice and hopefully today we are going to make it happen and catch a whole bunch of fish. This is how the ice season has been going. It's been tough to find ice. 
tough to find stuff you can get a machine on. And uh, if you could put all those things together with also finding walleyes, it's a good day. So stay tuned. We're gonna bring you guys along for the ride. MB edits behind the camera right now. Stay tuned. Sure do. All right, boys. Well, the good news is we definitely found ice. We are on it, and uh, that feels good. Um, we are sitting in a kind of big flat situation here. We're sitting in about 20 feet of water. I'm not really going to talk too much because I'm just kind of excited to fish right now. So we're just going to kind of let the fish hopefully do the talking here, and hopefully we kind of get out here. We didn't get out here super early because we had to like film and you know whatever, but. Um, we're hoping this kind of morning bite really starts firing off here. Butterfish. Oh, you just Ooh. got it. You got it. I think you got it. Let's see if the jig falls. Oh, nope, he's definitely on it. got it. He's on it. Definitely got it. Just took it right at the bottom. Oh, the first bite of the day here, guys. Forgot my normal dead stick around the truck, so. We got a 44 inch dead stick rod now. But you know what? It'll work. A little jackknife jig on here. Kind of the go-to dead stick presentation. And there we go. Fish number one on. Well Mitchell, we found a walleye or a sauger to probably catch here. And it is our first little walleye of the day. Now we're gonna get bigger ones than that today. But the goal is to put a whole bunch of fish on the ice. There we go. And it feels good, honestly, just to be on ice. So onwards and upwards from here, boys. See you later, little buddy. Back down he goes. All right, so kind of the one-two punch we're gonna roll with here is one aggressive bait, eighth ounce V-rod blade bait. Something I can really rip hard, a lot of vibration, calls a lot of fish in. Gonna either draw fish into a dead stick or get a lot of those aggressive bites, hopefully. Then we just got a dead stick sitting right next to it here. So a lot of times when I'm fishing these flats, you know, if you're fishing like a small little rock sweet spot, you can imagine that those fish just kind of like gravitate to that sweet spot. So if you're fishing a little bait that doesn't have a lot of calling power, so be it, the fish will see it when they go there, right? But if you're just fishing a big flat, big slow tapering flat like this is, those fish don't like necessarily get somewhere and like that's where they're honing into. So the more calling you can do. So a lot of times I'll do big motions like this with this V-Rod until I start seeing fish. And then the second they start coming at me, I'll kind of go to this, make that bait rock and just work it up. And most time they'll just slack line it right there. Got him. There we go. Nice. That one absolutely came in and absolutely yeah. throttled. It was so fast. The V-Rod. And that is exactly what you can expect at a lot of these kind of prime time hours when you're working aggressive baits. A lot of times walleyes will be as aggressive as you let them be. So if you just keep a little jig down there and work it real soft, they're not gonna come in and smash it. But if you put a blade bait on like this and kind of crank it hard five, six feet off bottom, those fish are generally much more inclined to come in and really rocket ship at you. Here we go. This little 15 incher to get things going. We're doing it, Mitchell. We've already surpassed our total from yesterday, even though we only fished for an hour yesterday, but we're gonna catch some fish today, I think. See you later, little buddy. Back down he goes. Fish on that one. Certainly had the right attitude right there. Absolutely right the up and absolutely smoked that blade bait. Probably gonna be a little nicer one here. Oh yeah, that's what we're after right there. That's what we're after right there. <laughs> Maybe we got a nice one. Look at that dude. And that is what makes fishing the, a lot of these bigger baits so much fun on the ice is because you just naturally call in a lot more there's another one actually down here hunting the dead stick right now I'll see if he bites but a lot of times on these big flats man it's just waves of fish i'm at the quarter quarter and eighth ounce v rod absolute money how about that one he's angry too how do you like the angle cameraman is the lighting good is the film good because that is honestly my honest concern audio looks to be on solid probably 20 incher there Big fat one, came in, smoked the blade bait. 
How's it getting any better than that, man? That is too cool right there. All right, there we go. Big, chunky walleye going back this morning. I mean, dude, are we having fun? Are we having fun? Jigging piles of walleyes on aggressive blade baits. I don't know how really how it gets a whole lot better than that. If we can catch some more of that size, that is really what we're after. So we'll deploy the V-Rod once again and make some magic happen, I suppose. It is so fun working them on a blade bait because you're really kind of interacting with them a lot more than you would like almost like dead stick in a spoon. We got it feeling all right. Oh yeah, nice sauger. First sauger of the day here, Mitchell. There you go, right here. 15, 16 inch sauger right there. That is one of the cool parts about fishing a lot of these border systems is that you get the opportunity obviously to catch walleyes and saugers. Saugers are generally a little bit smaller they got all the black little dots right here and uh they don't get quite as big sometimes we'll film on the mississippi where you get like 22 23 inch saugers but if you get like 18 19 inch sauger here pretty nice fish see you there little buddy go back down to your little mud flat there he goes that you guys saw I had one come in and just go right to the dead stick right away he's running here it was a little better mark it's often the nice part about using the forward facing as you can kind of tell when you get a little bit more quality one he's definitely feeling a little bit heavier dude are we having fun Mitchell <laughs> you sit here for about five minutes nothing then all of a sudden a big wave of fish will come in this one's actually feeling pretty solid here I'm pretty solid, like one of those little nicer ones. Can you see him? Oh, dude, look at him. Look at him. There we go. <laughs> that's that's a little better. We caught one probably about this size, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes ago. And we got another one on the dead stick. Some nice quality fish, man. No complaints with these at all. Get that little jackknife jig out of there. I mean, look at that thing, dude. Super nice, healthy walleyes, dude. I have no complaints on today, considering it's about 10 a.m. right now. How about you, Mitchell? Like is camera guy happy? Because if camera guy's happy, I am happy. That's all that really matters. Let's let that guy go. Two awesome men. Beautiful walleyes. One after another. We made a little move here, so we're gonna see what we can do. Just doing a little outside hole hopping, running and gunning. You know, the best style of ice fishing. So we're gonna stick with the aggressive bait presentations. And uh, in a second here, hopefully we'll be marking a few walleyes for you guys. I mean, do you think the people wanna know? I think so. All right, so cameraman has directed me to give All quick. Right. This, this whole cameraman thing. Is cameraman Mitchell has directed me to give quick snowmobile demo and how having a setup like this is highly beneficial when you're doing this kind of hole hopping style of fishing. So we've got the Humminbird Helix 5 at the dash. Now this obviously has a lake map on it. Now you can look at sonar on here, your mapping, everything, you know, kind of whatever you want on here. Keep all your waypoints in there. One thing I did was put this on here this year, which seems to be the best system I've found for carrying this transducer puck. So if cameraman Mitchell jumps over to this side, Basically all I did was tie off 
basically a small like tool pouch. I mean, you can keep like a pliers in here or stuff, but when I'm running, really easy to just throw the transducer in there and get to the next spot, take it out, boom. You're obviously fishing, right? Keeps it out of the way so the transducer's not getting all beat up as you're kind of running around. On the front, we got obviously auger rack. This is the uh, ice digger mount. Obviously works super good. I mounted it straight to the bumper. Get to where you're going, drill, get done drilling, put her back on, cinch her down, she's locked in. And of course it wouldn't be ice season if you didn't have a nice salty, dirty snowmobile. The back, we obviously got the big storage bins. Quickly slide all my rods in and out of here, keep my tackle in here. In here most of the time I'll put, all well, right now we got 100% Colombian K-cups in here for the Keurig hand warmers, but I'll put my graphs in here, things like that. On the back, this is generally where I keep my big live mount, mount it down right to the top, cut a little slit in the side of this box so I can put all the wires through there. And then back here right now, I have an additional two graphs plus Dakota lithium batteries and things of that nature. And then obviously on the hitch, we got the Eskimo in the back. So if you're gonna buy a machine for ice fishing, it's highly beneficial to try to set it up like this. It makes the process so easier, so much easier for like, oh, you wanna move two miles that way and fish for 20 minutes, see if there's fish, sure. Start the key, move to the next spot, and you're fishing right away. So it's not a big drawn out process. So when you're in the middle of the day, running around like this makes it easy. Right there. All right, guys, well, we are running around. Had a couple come in right off the bat. This one's feeling all right. It actually kind of downsized to a little, to a spoon here. Oh yeah, nice walleye. Nice walleye right there. Nothing big, but catching them running around it is so nice outside. Last night, we literally drove up here in a complete whiteout blizzard. And it was gonna, it was so brutal, you wouldn't even believe it was this nice out today. Mitchell said it's 13, 14, 15 degrees, sunny, absolutely no wind. Look at that, perfect 17 inch walleye right there. Just kind of was well, seeing a few fish middle of the day that just weren't like super fiery and just went to the old eighth ounce rattle master in a bright pink for kind of this tea stained water. And right away, that one flew up a bit. There we go. Let's let that guy go. I mean, you can't beat it, man. Catching walleyes, jigging all morning, running around outside on a beautiful day, catching more walleyes. And basically, if I am seeing a bunch of these fish running around and like not, they're not super bitey, and generally all I do is go to a spoon like this, go to a little bit more of that hard knocking, put just a touch of meat on there, just enough to convince them if they need it. And generally that setup right there is gonna catch any finesse walleye that swims most of the time. He's gonna eat it for sure. What? Just gonna sit there on him. Got him. <laughs> That's the best dude is when you see one coming and you're like, oh, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. And then he actually does it. It's feeling all right, feeling all right. We seem to have landed on a little pot of decent sized walleyes here in the midday. Oh yeah, look at him coming up. Decent fish there, huh, Mitchell? Nothing wrong with those ones. Look at the dude, just an absolute butterball too. Well, you guys are seeing it real time, just to kind of switch these fish wanted from that real aggressive blade bait down to the just the, kind of the standard spoon. Another perfect walleye right there. I mean, I honestly don't know what more you could ask for. After, especially given the winter this year, running around, trying to find ice, finally you get on some and you're catching nice fish. Dude, on a day like this, are you kidding me? How's it getting better, cameraman? Awesome. Is cameraman gonna catch one? Maybe. Cameraman's gonna catch one this evening. <laughs> I'm gonna film cameraman catching one. Are you gonna call me cameraman? Right? Yeah, you don't even have a name anymore, to be honest. It's just literally cameraman. That's literally all you are to me as cameraman. <laughs> Cameraman, get me subway. Cameraman, swap my GoPro batteries. Cameraman, how's the lighting look? All right, you guys. Cameraman. Yeah, we got one. He's marking one. Yeah, he's coming up high. He's coming up high. You get him? I got him. I got him. Cameraman's on, dude. Cameraman, just cameraman the, did the lowly it. cameraman. Dude, he, this is actually. It I'm looked. Not, it looked like a better mark. I'm not kidding. This is a nice fish. It definitely did look like a better mark. Yeah, this is a nicer fish, man. I'm not kidding. We're kind of waiting for the next little push to come through and yeah. see him fighting down there on the live. What do we got, Mitchell? What do we got? Take a look in the hole. What do we got? Oh, dude, it is a nicer one. It's not doing anything. Look at that one. <laughs> Cameraman gets can't a even, good one. Come on, what's this thing? Dude, look at that. There we go. <laughs> Cameraman. You like how I grabbed him too? 
Cameraman for the win, dude. Just a lowly cameraman. This, be, is, this is like the biggest fish we caught so far. It today. is a nice one. So I wonder what the rest of what are the man odds do, is, do is hook solid to. I wonder uh, what do you what do you guys think of this? Yeah, He's been me, throwing shade at me all day, calling me let me correct some lighting. Cameraman and He's been making fun of me all day, calling me cameraman. Look who pulls up the biggest fish of the day. That is a nice one. I think we might be a little fogged, but I think we're good. A little fogged, yeah, it looks like it's fogged. Pull him outside for a second. Sure. You want to be on the other side of the sun? No, this is good. Just be like right here. All right. All right, there we go. A little better shot, so it's not so foggy. It's a good one. Do we have audio though? We have a decent audio? Yeah, it's coming off the boom. We have, okay, we, so we do have audio. So there we go. Look at that. Biggest fish of the day. I mean, just because I'm using the camera right now and editing doesn't mean I can't fish. Look at that. Yeah, even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. <laughs> Whatever. Look at that. That is a nice one though. Okay, let's get back in, huh? What a perfect day, man. It is. Give me some. Cameraman. Nooks, bro. Cameraman. <laughs> For the release shot, yep. the all important release shot. Don't screw this up, Tom. Oh, look at that thing, dude. You got it? Get you a shot of that? Oh, yeah. All right. Ready? It doesn't get no better, my friends. See you later, dude. Heck yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, what do you think? Is this video a wrap? Pretty much. You got a good shot. You got audio. You got lighting. You got everything you need. Well, boys, we are uh, hopefully gonna get some gas going here, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. My gas isn't pumping right now, but when we do get gas, we are headed on. We, we talked about it. We could have stayed where we are, filmed a similar video tomorrow. You know, a couple of walleye drifters, a couple of adventurous souls, a couple guys on the hunt for a big bite. So we're gonna have uh, gas up the truck here, drive probably three to four hours tonight. Um, find a place to shack up, rest our weary heads for the night, and then target something different tomorrow. That's going to be a lot harder than what we did today. So, stay tuned. That's the plan. Thank you guys for watching this video. Let us know what you think of Mitch's editing skills and his big lucky fish catch at the end there. Appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned for more content. We'll see you next time.